I was looking at this character who, who I'd never seen before. I'd never seen a black man in the back seat. I'd never seen a black person in the position of power, right? In that era, from the standpoint of being the person that the white person was working for. Mm -hmm. And I also looked at, at the iteration of the script that I had. I also looked at Dr. Shirley as, and the choice he made in hiring a white driver, I kind of looked at it like he was flipping off the South. And, and sort of like the Chitlin circuit by hiring a white guy to drive him around. That also had to serve as a bodyguard, but there, was, there wasn't other black people. Uh, there weren't a lot, I think Nat King Cole may have had one, but there weren't a lot of other black artists driving around through the South and white people having to witness a white man get your luggage, right? Mm -hmm. So there was the aspect of him being queer, the aspect of him being queer which I also felt like I hadn't seen a black man in power from the 50s, 60s, who was, who was wealthy, affluent, educated, and also in the back seat. Because as soon as you switch those characters, that's a different story, right? Like, as soon as I'm driving and I'm driving Vigo, that's a different story, right? Right. And so I think, I think for me all around, there were there were enough elements I felt like in the story where mm -hmm. me looking at it as an individual, I felt like I could bring something special to that character yeah. and also bring and, and highlight what I understood Dr. Shirley to be about. Yeah. And going into it, again, this is my first time having any time to prepare for anything because all my jobs leading up to this point have been, you got an audition, you're going for it, you're shooting it two weeks later. Like that has been my entire career. So this is the first time where like it happens quick. And when I was doing Moonlight, I was shooting three, four other jobs at one time. So I'd be working on House of Cards, I'd be shooting Moonlight, I was shooting this other thing one day. Uh, 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 there was, and I was shooting Luke Cage all at the same time. And Cotton mouth, you've all- Piecing them together. <laughs> so my point is when I saw Green Book, Again, I have always had to look at where is my opportunity? How do I make the best of this opportunity? What do I see in this character? What right. is this character offering? And so from that standpoint, I felt like that there was foundationally. Now, if I looked at his talent, said that he was, he had this liner notebook that said that he was, uh, had left Florida at nine, was educated in Russia, was in London for his teenage years. And then it came. So I was like, this guy has lived this like unicorn affluent life, kind of separated out from family and friends mm -hmm. and, and has had this extraordinary experience. Yeah. Early on, the first thing you're going to ask is, well, who can I talk to? Where, where's family and friends? And I was told that they were that there was, um, that, and this had never, was ever, never spoken about, but that, that he was estranged from the family, and, but that, and they were very, and they were peripheral. Like there wasn't like, you know, when someone passes away and there's some like fourth cousin somewhere or w what have you. So I was, so there wasn't really anyone that they could put me in contact with. There was very little, at that time, pre-movie, you couldn't find a lot of information from Dr. Shirley. And so there were these liner notes from albums that, that he, I guess, had written and that his estate had been left to a white man who was a friend or partner who was 20 some odd years younger than him. And that's all I had. So again, this is my first time even being part of a project being greenlit. This is like all new information for me, how to even go about it how to like talk to someone, right. how to even prepare, how, even having that time. So wow. I'm going, okay, they're saying there's the family's peripheral as evidenced by who has the estate. Um, okay, and I got this little, there was this little documentary I had to go off of so I could see a little bit of him physically, get a sense of like some speech patterns and physicality, and that was it. 
And so, you were forty thousand dollars in the hole. <laughs> I, no, and that isn't that isn't even part of the story, honestly, because I I was I was okay. It's just I think my point in saying that is coming off of and mentioning the the financial aspect of it is people got to understand for any actor, any artist, the context of of where they're at when they just receive any opportunity Absolutely. and they're looking at it holistically right. and all the parts involved. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I wasn't even also, um, I wasn't looking at it from like, I mean, cause I, I did okay, but it wasn't like some crazy payday. Like it was, but it was, it was good. It was more than I had ever been paid up until that point. But my, my point is, um, that there was a lot going into that moment of trying to build a career so I can keep doing this. And literally I had a daughter born four days before I won the Oscar. So I'm trying to like, okay, how wow. do I, and I'm living across the street from a PS storage in like a 1200 square foot house, like for real, like no joke. Like, so I was like, where's my next opportunity? And what's the, not just, I wasn't, I was turning down. I wasn't trying to just do some big, blow up explosive thing. I wanted to find the one the one that felt right holistically. So I was shooting True Detective. Again, yeah. another job that I negotiated myself into basically from the supporting character to after the Oscar, I negotiated myself into pitch myself for the lead part in True Detective. Right. And so I had finished that I was about to finish that job working 80 hours a week or whatever on that job because of the old age makeup. So the, the hours were crazy. And I flew in to do some sound dubbing on, on Green Book. And in the process of flying in to do the sound dubbing on Green Book, I was told that, so this means the movie's picture locked. I'm just doing some sound. It was, I was like, hey, I was told there was some family that popped up and that there could be some issues, but we're working it out. I was like, family, what family? He said there's no family. Like, yeah, I guess there's a cousin or something. So, and at that point, so for me, I wasn't, it was too late for me to hop on the phone and talk to, talk to someone because then it's inappropriate. If the family is learned, if, if family has popped up now, and now the family's like, yo, we got some issues with this. We don't know dot, dot, dot. I can't, as, as the lead character, uh, 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 the, the character for that, representing that family, it'd be inappropriate for me now, if there's lawyers involved and stuff, for me to be hopping on the phone on behalf right. of the studio, talking to the family. I'm like, whoa, what happened? Like, I didn't even know this was the case.